Welcome. Um, for those of you who may not know this fine gentleman, would you please <laughs> give an introduction so that our... See, we got almost 3,000 people in here. No way. Really? Yeah, we got 2,000. Uh, and that's the after pressure. a three-minute commercial break to help pay wow. for the giveaway. Absolutely, so, yeah. So, like, there's, there's, some, there's some people in here, and um, uh, they want to the know pressure. who you are and what you do. Well, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How are you all doing? Well, I hope. Uh, my name is James Alexander. Now, the reason why Tangent has been so kind as to let me onto his onto his stream to help out, I say help out, talk, is because I am the voice actor for a certain character from uh, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. I am the voice actor for the zealot male, the judge. So the one who sounds like this, screaming the Emperor's name! Yes! That is I. That is I. Well, that is, that like is I. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I was That is shown, fantastic. I was shown your stream tangent by one of the writers of Dark Tide, a, a wonderful lady called Sarah Corkwell, and she was like, this guy is loving the judge. And I was like, well, <laughs> let's, let's hop in, say hi. And you were like, oh, I saw you doing your impression. I was like, this guy, he gets it. He loves the judge. <laughs> so, it, it, um... It's, I, I am all about the the fire and zeal when it when it comes to the yeah. uh, the empire. So ab absolutely, and and I gotta say, you know, I'm a little biased, but the best character, oh, uh, the best God. voice in the game. <laughs> by, That's very by very far. kind of you. I, um... I, I I am biased, but but I I I do feel very strongly about that. I'm arguably even more biased as he is me and I am him. So it's a, I, 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 I like to say that there's a character for everyone in the game. But no, it's very, very kind of you to be so, so welcoming and uh, say such kind things about the character. And I hope the, uh, the gang who's been watching have been enjoying him as well. He's got, he's got a lot to say, you know, a lot it, to say. He's got some, some, some great lines. So question that I have, uh, did of you course. come up with any of the lines for the character? Or was any of it improv or or uh, was it straight from a script? It's a, like a collaborative process, so we, um... So obviously we have the script already written for us when we go in. But then you are more than welcome to give, like, uh, you know, different slants to it. Like a, a good thing I really got into is adding like more particular grunts to the the lines, but you you are given the space for improv as well. Like they say, I'll oh, just they usually just say to you, just uh you know improvise something, and then they're like, yeah, great, put it in the game. You know, uh, one of the, my favorite ones is when you get grabbed by a mutie. Uh, they kind of throw you about, don't they? So they I do. got a, I got a line in where I go. <laughs> Like that. That was uh, one I was quite proud of, and also uh, just yelling "Beneficent Emperor." Uh, I added a few extra ones of them in there. <laughs> your your microphone's yeah, like, fighting you a little bit. Uh, I think. It fine, so I'm gonna go back a bit there. Is that better? <laughs> if I yell from over here, is that better? <laughs> that, that that is actually. Yeah, sorry, yeah, is. Sorry, I'm I'm learning uh, the better ways to uh, distance myself from the microphone. The voice is too powerful for uh, any normal mic to handle. It, it just can't it, handle it. It, it, it can. It, I can hear that. I can hear that. Um, so tell me, have you uh, been familiar with the Warhammer franchise prior to Dark uh, Dark Tide? Or absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, so I got into uh, Warhammer as a as a as a wee lad. Um, my dad got me into it. He bought me a set of uh, Space Marines and he painted them into like the the Ultramarine colors because you know you got to start with Ultramarines and then we moved on to Tau. Uh, wow. Necrons, yeah. So I've got a nice little set of them. So, so did your, uh, did you guys play the game, or was it more of just a hobby? It, we tried to play the game, but we just couldn't get into it. So we just kind of stuck to the collecting, painting, hobbyist side of it. That but, is beyond cool, though, know, to hear yeah. that that you had parental figures that were that were yeah, into it and actually like, introduced you to it. It was it was amazing. Like it's definitely f formed my kind of interest in like fantasy and stuff like that. Because then we obviously collected some Warhammer fantasy as well, like uh, the Vampire Counts and uh, the other army as well, which I've forgotten. Oh, I've gone blank. We also had some of the Lord of the Rings Warhammer as well. Oh, so, yeah, was, th th that model yeah. range was really nice. Oh, amazing! The, the, the Sauron model yeah. to this day, I think, oh. is one of the best ones that Games it's, Workshop's made. It's it's seriously impressive. Like I, I mean, the stuff they released now is great, but I, I have a very soft spot for the the ye olde Warhammer figures. You know, like, really so do. so you like both fantasy as well as 40k? 
Absolutely, yeah. I'd say I prefer oh, 40k mostly. I played like a lot of Dawn of War as I was growing up, so 40k is more. But I play. I was playing Vermintide one and two. Oh, just two actually. Tell a lie, just two. So um, that kind of got me into uh, yeah, modern Warhammer and Space Marine as well. That game was yeah fantastic. So uh, yeah, that's <clears throat> my, yeah. my parents uh, got me into Warhammer as well, though not because they were part of the hobby. Uh, so when when Back back in uh, early two thousands, there there was a Bretonian box set, and uh, I was just browsing models, and I thought the Dark Elves looked kind of cool, and you know they were they called are. like executioners <laughs> and stuff like yeah. that, and and my my parents were were a little religious, and they were like, oh, that sounds so so evil and so so mean and all of that and they're fun. like and they're like wouldn't you rather have these nice these nice oh look at these knights they look so nice wouldn't you rather have yeah. that and so they they're bribed awesome. me with a bretonian <laughs> box set but what my parents didn't know and i would soon find out bretonia is not full of good guys no they are <laughs> responsible for a lot of war crimes <laughs> yeah and they, yeah, and they, they the treat their, their people. people horribly i'm like uh, reading through like this dark book you know and and <laughs> my parents like you know they 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 i was going to just buy one unit of executioners but they got me a bretonian box set to not buy the executioner so that's little how i got started in the hobby as a bretonian <laughs> player and then, and then i would be a tomb kings know. player later oh tomb kings of kemri are like i have the codex for them well I had. No, I've still got it somewhere, uh, but I never actually collected any of the army. It's a shame because I actually love anything that's like undead or mm -hmm. like zombie related. I'm like, yeah, give me that. I, I uh, had at one point a 10,000 point Tomb Kings army. That's at one immense. point. That's amazing. <laughs> Unstoppable. It's fantastic. Well, I mean, they, they weren't exactly the most balanced army. They weren't exactly the best on the tabletop. They had some pretty glaring weaknesses, like you know, double damage from fire. But it was oh. it was fun to play them because you know I I could tell that hardly anybody really collected them, which is probably why they got, got canceled. But ah, oh, it's a shame because I I just love the design. Because I'm I'm much more about the design aesthetic. I'm like I have no idea how they work on a tabletop. I'm oh, me like, too. They, they they're so cool. fun. They're <laughs> such such a beautiful model range too. Um, but uh, so let, let, let's bring the topic, you know, away yeah. away from general Warhammer for a moment, and and a bit back to to you, since you are, of course, our guest on here. Uh, okay. What what uh, uh, other works uh, have can we find you in for your voice right. acting? Like what, so, what other things have you done? <laughs> so uh, to quickly list them off, uh, if anybody plays the Formula One games, uh, Formula One 2021 2022, I'm one of the voices of the R&D engineer who tells you how to basically fix your car. So he's always like, make sure right. you spend the correct amount of money to make sure your car runs how you need to spend it. That's uh, <laughs> one of the voices. Uh, the, the Division 2, I did a lot of um, uh, crowd characters for that and like the odd voices you'd find on like uh, audio logs and stuff like that. A lot of uh, fun American accents doing that, so that was that was very good. Hmm. Um, Watership Down, which is a Netflix uh, animated series about rabbits, it's quite a grim story. That was fun as well. Hitman Two. Uh, what else? I feel like I'm missing something quite obviously glaring here. And you know what? About 14 of the things that I also can't tell you about right now because I'm not out yet. Oh, they will be. well, they it will sounds be. like you're being kept busy though. If you've got like yeah. that many projects up Whoa. in the air. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like this year, since uh, about January of this year, it's been like very busy, mm -hmm. like some crazy opportunity, <laughs> including Dark Tide. You know, I was on Dark Tide since January, and, and we st we more or less had a session for about an hour or two hours every week mm. up until about September. So that's like over thirty hours of voiceover. Over thirty hours of doing this constantly. So uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of. Uh, <laughs> so, sounds terrific. Yeah, and 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 that's is that your your natural voice or do you have any audio assistance when you when um, you do that? No, it's all it's all it's all me. It's all it's all me. It's incredible. Not to, not to brag too. I mean, you've got the ogre as well. Who's like constantly like this all the time? So that's uh that was funny because I did initially audition for the judge. An ogrin and a cutthroat veteran as well. So, so do you do one of the voices of the ogrin, or are you just showing that you you, you oh, can do just, one? I was just showing that I like I like to do. Okay, one. I was just showing up. Fantastic, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. And how long have you been uh, into professional voice acting? So, like, from the me starting voice, as in the day I was like, oh, I want to do voice acting, because I've always like uh, like copied voices and 
mimicked stuff since I was a kid. But mm -hmm. uh, it's been about five years since I initially started pursuing the career. And like for the first four years, it was about one to two credits projects per year. Yeah. And then <clears throat> last year, I got my first Asian. And obviously that opens, it's not, it doesn't open all the doors for you, but it opened a lot more doors for me. So then I was, you know, just uh, auditioning a lot more and being being a lot luckier with things. But um, yeah, I'd say officially about five years. So it's a slow process. You can't rush it. Hmm. Well, unless you happen to, you know, fall into it really easily. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a slow process for me, but um, you know, I'm learning lessons constantly and I'm incredibly grateful for it. It's, it's been amazing. And what was, what was your background before you wound up um, taking the dive into professional voice acting like did you come uh, from an acting background previously radio or something uh, else well uh, yes yeah. so uh, obviously at school I was always uh, studying media and you know, the performing arts and stuff like that, drama as we call it and then I went to university to do media production so that was more behind the camera stuff you know cameraman radio was a big part of it I really got into radio at university and when mm -hmm. I left university I uh, joined a volunteer hospital radio where you do a little show on the evenings. And I did, I did student radio as well. But then obviously for like um, financial reasons, I started working at a, a supermarket called Aldi. I don't know if you have that. Uh, anyway. Yeah, we do have those actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, I worked at Aldi for five and a half years. And um, I, about two years in, I was like, I need to start pursuing something, um, you know, would like to get into. It might not work out, but it's a good way to spend my time. So I, uh, I just started trying to, yeah, that was it. Like I didn't go to any acting school or anything like that. I've not, you know, not had like years and years of fancy drama school. Not, not, not to show off or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah, how my journey's gone. But I, I have uh, had some tutoring since I started getting jobs, just to try and, you know, fix some areas and, and be better. I don't think I'm at the top of my game, you see. But I'm very much trying to uh, get better, you know, as we go. Absolutely. Um, so, what was it like when you first got started? Like, what would you say is the, the was the barrier of entry that was. Um, surprising to you if any uh one of the things is is the sheer amount of people who who are you know obviously trying to make it as an actor trying to you know make it in the uh because anyone can wake up one day and be like oh, i want to be a voice actor you know because there's so many talented people out there and the sad thing is there's some incredibly talented people who will never get noticed enough to being something just just through just it not is it because networking is so important, or is it, is it a techno is, technology gap? Like you gotta have a certain quality. Uh, well, yeah, it's um, there's definitely a a, a basic quality to uh, auditions, but it's not as high as you'd think. It's not like oh, you need to have like a industry standard microphone to record. I had a very basic microphone when I started, okay. and I was re I was recording under my duvet to make it sound yeah you know, like sound. Uh, I did my I recorded my first reel. When I got my first um, microphone in the summer of like 2017 or something like that, hmm. and uh, I, I wrote my own reels of characters I've made up, made it about two minutes long, edited, uh, recorded them under a duvet in the scorching summer, and uh, put that online and found uh, certain profiles to kind of post it on because the issue is with acting as well. There's a lot of kind of pay to um, act essentially schemes where you pay to join a site and then you have a list of jobs there, and mm -hmm. it always seems a little bit predatory in a way but at the same time you've got to you've got to start somewhere you know it's it's i mean i started there you know sure. so it's just, um it's finding what you can it, it's it's very difficult and you just got trying to uh, get advice because networking is very important and if most people are really nice and they will give you the information you need to try and you know essentially help you out as best you can they can't give you the job but they can at least give you some skills or advice to kind of shape you better yeah now obviously there's no silver bullet for any one thing and i'm sure you get this question all the time but seeing as how i see it a couple times already in the chat being asked if you had any advice for uh anybody that was thinking about maybe wanting to get into something like voice acting what Absolutely. what advice would you share uh I'll, the short one i've been using which is uh the three p's essentially practice professionalism and patience mm. because you can always practice voice acting. You can see, I mean, essentially, you could a tangent yourself. You could clash yourself as training a, a certain voice by doing your version of the judge voice. <clears throat> that, is, that is you yes. essentially figuring a character out on a daily basis. If you do that long enough without realizing, you will eventually kind of be like, oh, actually, that's kind of working for me. You know, like you're sure. you like doing an accent, like for a, a long time. Say if it's like an American accent, like spent a good few years watching TV shows of American accents, and you kind of eventually kind of pick up the 
you know, the, the, the kind of basic wording for how these things work, you know, like I think you kind of know how the pronunciations, you know, like aluminum, yep. Iran, you know, you kind of figure it out. And um, that just talking in it, like it drives, I'm sure it drives my wife mad, but walking about talking in the voice is a great way to kind of train yourself. And also watching and listening to video game performances. I mean, that's what I've been doing my entire life. Like, you, you know a good game performance when you hear it. Absolutely. And, you know, obviously there's different kinds of acting in video games. Like, yeah, there's more of the realistic, there's the more wacky. Like, Dark Tide's kind of the the bigger kind of scope of it. But it absolutely is, like, yeah, that is the best train. Like, you can go to classes as well. There are voice acting coaches you can go to. But if you're starting out, you just trust yourself to put time in. If you feel like there's an accent you're not good at, just practice. And when you're eventually in a position to be working on an actual professional job, whether it's small or even big, just be professional, be nice, and be patient. Because, you know, you can't force networking, friendships with people, people you get on with. You may hit it off straight away, and that's great, but you can't, you know, you can't force that. You can't mm -hmm. be best friends overnight and be like, oh, give me a job now. That's, right, yeah. oh, exactly. It, it comes across as, you know, like you're using someone, so it just takes time, you know. It's been five years for me, and yeah, it's felt like a drag at times, and other times I've been like, is it even worth doing, but... It, you also, also mentioned uh, patience and professionalism as, as yes. part of that, and I'm, yeah. I'm willing to wager, because I know in my industry, being professional and patient goes a very long way. It I'm does. guessing it goes further than you'd realize in yours, too. Absolutely, you don't you don't want to annoy people. You don't want people to you know be put off from you, and that can be a paranoid thing. You're like, oh, did I say the right thing to them? Oh, did I come across too overbearing? And I think that in at the end of the day, like you go there, you be as nice as you can, you do the job as well as you can, you do your best. Because at the end of the day, you may not be able to be the best, but you can certainly do your best. And hmm. that, yes, that is enough. That is enough. Sometimes you know, it's not always about being the top dog because you see so many people. Like from experience, people trying to become the best person there is, and they're just treading on everybody else. Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, you you want to network because you never know who's going to message you and be like, "Oh, we'd like you to try it." You're not going to get given the job. Make no mistake, you know, you're not in the position of people just giving you the job because they like you. But an but, but they might keep you in mind if an opportunity comes up to try your hand at getting the job. Exactly, tangent. Exactly. So they'll be like, "Oh, well, you know what? I think you'd be good to read for this, actually." And you might not get the job, and that's okay. But any audition is an opportunity to get a job. Essentially, right. um, there's a voice actor called Neil Newbern. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he did the voice of Heisenberg in Resident Evil uh, Village. And oh, okay. A starian in Baldur's Gate 3. I hmm. heard an interview with him, and he said, the audition is the job. Like, that is you essentially, you know, imagine it almost as your first unpaid session. And they're like, oh, we like you good enough, you'll come back, you know. Don't yeah. see it any different. Just just go full hog. Do your best. And also, don't be afraid to submit more than one audition, as long as they aren't too long. Because two takes, they might hear something in the other one, or they didn't in the other. And then that ups your chances. Don't go sending them, like, five auditions. Like, the max is, like, three. Hmm. No, that's some great advice there. That's really good advice. Yeah, I, you know, I'm just, just trying my best. I'm not going to try and gatekeep the community, because I know there's probably people in your chat who are more than capable of you know doing an incredible job it's just knowing where to start because it, it's so it, it's so difficult you know because you feel so alone at times now what why why would you say that is like is it just because it's a lot of it's it's up to you to do your best it's because like at the end of the day it has to be you that well yeah i know you're completely right you are end of the day when you're going to voice acting you're essentially starting your own business like mm -hmm. you are you are the selling point you are the product and you want to make sure that you have a good reputation you yep. you know people that uh see you in a good light they don't you know think about oh he's a bit rough you may don't get me wrong you may have sessions where you leave and you're like oh i don't feel like i did as well as i thought there but at the end of the day the people in the session are there to make sure you do it correctly. They're, they're there to tell you, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And mm. if you really care, they'll let you do it again. But yeah, it's also because I'm not speaking for all actors here, but there are some actors who, like, they are very, uh, what's the word? They do kind of gatekeep it. They don't want other people to come in because they feel like it's going to take their jobs away. Which, sure. 
I understand that logic, but at the end of the day, there are, if you look at all the voice actors and we'll look at all the programs that need voice actors, there's more than enough stuff going. It's just getting the opportunities to get to them. Absolutely. You, you just need to find people who you can, you know, get advice from, but not use them, you know, because obviously some people would be willing to help, but there's a difference between getting information to make yourself better than just trying to ride off somebody else's coattails, you know? Hmm. So, um, plucking a question from, from chat here. Uh, is there Absolutely. any role that you would really, really want to to have in your professional career? Ooh. Like, is, is there a particular one that, uh, if it ever came up, you would lunge at the opportunity to oh, audition for? So, so many. I mean, um, I mean, what one of the like the smaller ones is like just creature noises, like just going. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. I'd love to do that. That's that's so much fun. Just you know, seeing the vocal image you can do, but like bigger things. I'd love to do a character in like a um like something like from Naughty Dog or God of War, you know, just one of their characters. Mm -hmm. But but also I'd absolutely love I think if like I ever got like the chance to do the worst it'd be a dream. Like uh, one of my favorite comic book characters is Hellboy. Oh and okay. I'd, I'd love to do the voice of you know, I don't know if my, my voice is yeah, old enough to sound like Hellboy, but I'd love to do like uh, you know Myers got a deep voice kind of yeah. Bam, kind of, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. Look, a comic book character, I think, would be fantastic. Like, obviously, there's now a spots for like Batman and the Joker, because obviously uh, Kevin Conroy, rest in peace, is gone. But there's still <laughs> been other actors doing the voice of Batman the past few years, anyway. But yeah. I think, yeah, like a, or well, something from Star Wars, just something from a mass, a, a big property. I think that would be a dream come true, just because it's, you know, you hear so much about these projects, and you find it's not even about about the main role. It's just about being involved in my art, you know. Like I'm, I'm not fighting to get to the, the big roles. I'm just fighting, or not even fighting. I just want to be involved and have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, how long did did it take for you to uh, wrap up projects like Dark Tide? Like how how long was the commitment to wow. working on that? What's a wow. day in the life like for for a, a, a AAA voice actor? Well, oh, that's very kind of you, Tangent. Um, so, it, how it kind of goes is, so with the projects, you're not really given, like, a a window for how long it's going to take. Like, so, mm. oh, oh, not in my experience, anyway. I mean, you, one project I did, they were like, because uh, that was a motion capture project, so that was different. They were like, you know, we need you for four days. So that was a bit more, you know, direct. But with Warhammer... Like, I, I did, like, the first month of sessions. So that's about four sessions, yeah, but one, once a week because mm. they're quite intense. And uh, I, was, I was like, oh, so, like, how long do you think um, this is going to go on for? Like, uh, you know, just in general. And they were like, oh, um, at least uh, over a year. And I was like, oh, what? Mm. What? So, um, obviously, you know, it's it's no lie there'll probably be DLC for Dark Tide. So right. I haven't been officially released from the uh the project yet because when you're released you know that you know you're not coming back for it you're all done right and, so, and i know that so, you can't tell us too much probably about that but what one no. thing that has been <laughs> you know theorized in chat is that you know it might be difficult to introduce let's say a new character because there would be a lot of dialogue between all the voice actors that would need to yeah. be incorporated well, but if they're not letting you guys go yet, maybe there's well, possible hope for something. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it, 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 yeah, exactly. Because you're never like told you will be back with this project. You know, you will. Yep. You will but, but also, when you leave, they'll be like, "Oh, that's it then." I think that's all we need from you. Because I'm, 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 excuse me, I'm on another project currently where I did about four sessions and they were like, right, that's it for you then, cool. I was like, oh great, over. And then two weeks later, I got a message saying, oh, we need you back. I was like, oh, okay. But um, mm. yeah, it's, it's it's a weird one because I can't confirm there'll be new characters in Dark Tide because I know I'm a voice actor on it, but you don't really ever get to meet the other voice actors or you get to hear the, uh, you know, the the down, the, you know, what's, what DLC may or may not be coming. Oh, so, so when you're reacting to somebody, uh, you're, you're, are you hearing their line first, yeah. or, or are yeah. you guessing? What, it what... varies. It, it depends uh, if it's been recorded first. So, uh, so for uh, example, uh, I did one session where I had a, uh, it was a, a response to an ogre, and it was like something like the ogre going, 
I'm not really sure where we've got to go next, kind of like that. And then I'd be like, have faith, Slab. Follow me and we shall never be lost. You know, it was kind Excellent. of, um, yeah, you, you have that. But other times you'd have the director just kind of going, um, so where do we go next? And you just, you know, they'd, be, they'd just say, I'll just respond to it this way. It, it varies, but I guess as part of the job, being able to bounce off of actual mm. uh, recorded dialogue, but also someone just reading it to you at the same time. And, so and you yeah. said there was a mix of improv as well as script. Like, do they just have you just going, just like yeah, yeah. saying like, lines <laughs> that come to mind when in, when reacting to a prompt? Yeah, so, um, like, cause obviously Warhammer is 97.5% fighting, or at least this game is, <laughs> anyway. So, um, they'd just be like, oh, I'll just go for some generic battle cries. The closest thing to, like, knowing what to do would be, like, light battle cry, which would be like, you know, face me, or something like that. And then you have medium battle cry, and would be like, come on, face me. And then they'd be like, you know, a heavy battle cry, and would be like, come on. Face me, <laughs> the microphone got out yeah, again. Yeah. On that one. I, had yeah. to, I had to lean very far. I'm going to turn yeah. it down slightly, just to, just to save your ears. Is that better? Yeah, we can, that, that's good. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt our ears. It's just the yeah. microphone just was, goes up too too epic. Got to got to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> well, a funny story. I actually broke a microphone on my first day of Dark Side. Oh no! <laughs> just just through shouting. <laughs> Are those expensive in the studio? They didn't tell me, but oh. the studio is a, a big studio, and it, it was expensive. I was told. Uh, <laughs> I felt, I felt very, very bad. <laughs> oh man. Well, I guess they can't blame you too much for that, though. That's no. why they. That's why they brought you in. Just do my job, lads. Don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, what was your favorite part about working on the project? Because you, oh. you got to do. You were a lifelong fan of Warhammer as a whole. It sounds like you've liked gaming all your life. Oh, I have. And yeah, so you you probably had to, uh, I don't know if they made you look at a lot of source material or anything like that, but you probably knew a bunch of it already. But what, what, what was it like <laughs> uh, working on something that you really enjoyed since childhood? It was completely surreal, Tangent Mate, to be honest. It was like, I think it's only just hitting me that I'm involved in, in this because, like, I was speaking to the main writer and he was saying, like, yeah, Warhammer has never been bigger it is the biggest it's probably ever been mm -hmm. especially like from the video game format and i was like no way that many people are gonna be hearing my voice but it, i think the main thing is that because i think what helped because i kind of i knew of warhammer and i knew kind of what the characters were kind of like to an extent mm -hmm. i think when going to the studio the character was more or less you you knew what vibe they were going for you knew what they wanted but Right. Obviously, a lot of lines. There's a lot of lore-based stuff. Like, um, there's a lot of names thrown out there, planets, events, and I, I know Warhammer, but I'm not well versed on the lore to that extent. Mm -hmm. So, the great thing about the writers and Fat Shark is that whenever you had a lore question, they they would answer it for you. And I think context is key. That's another thing I've always had to uh, people. Yeah, if you know what the deal is, it'll help the, the delivery so much because you'll understand you know, what. You, what you're actually talking about, mm. you know. Uh, I think, yeah, I think the favorite thing is the main thing for this. You've seen it all come together because in the booth, you don't really get any. We got shown the trailer, the original uh, launch, not the launch trailer, sorry, like the uh, the first gameplay trailer when we started. Yeah. I did at least. No, so they showed me that and I was like, oh, I'm part of this. And then, you know, for months, you have nothing. You don't know what your character looks like. You don't get told what your character looks like. You just, you just assume, you know, mm. and obviously with this game, uh, character creation that way. But, um, so I went in. And yeah, that was it. But the, when it really hit me was when they did the character spotlight, which came out in about set, start of September, mm -hmm. the Zealot, and it had uh, the Lady Judge at the start. And then out of nowhere, you just hear, Justice plays no favorites, and nor do I. The corruption fear me as readily as the heretic or the traitor. And then I was just like, oh my God, this, 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 is, this, is, this is happening, isn't it? You know, I think. And it's not just about me either, make no mistake about that. I've got, got all judgy on you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's about everyone involved, all the engineers, the writers, you know, the sure. dev team. Every, not just me in the studio just being like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, some incredible god. It, it was literally uh, just you know, getting back and forth, feedback, seeing what worked. It was just... Well, you, you get to see, you know, a literal art come to life. You know, and a, a lot of people, unfortunately, don't 
view video games as art, but there's there's so much production uh, behind it that like you know to see it come together piece by piece and then yeah. see it all together in the trailer like that must have been a really big moment. I don't know how you can't see it as art. I mean, like you can It's the amount of effort that goes. That, that's the thing as well. Because well, before, like, I was probably working and stuff, like, you could just turn around and be like, oh, that game's crap. Oh, you know, it's, oh, it's rubbish. Mm -hmm. Straight away, without even giving the game a chance. But uh, when you work on a game, you see, like, the human cost for it. Like, sure. the amount of people who pour days, they stress over, they toil over it, they toil over writing a line differently because it just isn't working. And then it'll come out and people will be like, it's a bad game. And it's like mm -hmm. I, it, it, it's very it, easy. You you would never cr criticize, you know, like your your plumber like that or something like you know <laughs> when when you you hear some of the concerns that come out about games. Some can be founded, but yes, it, it's very easy to be a yeah. critic. It's very yeah, easy absolutely. to be a critic for, uh, in, in the video game industry. I mean, the amount of passion that goes into making each game, you can say it's different. Like you can tell when something's been like. Uh, as we'd say in England, half assed mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, you, you can tell, but like, it's still, but there's still effort gone into it, and you need to, I think, giving stuff the benefit of the doubt, but obviously these days as well, like, a, an entire game can be overshadowed by the implementation of, like, uh, microtransactions and stuff like that. <laughs> so, and, I, I, chat's saying, like, if my plumber messes up, I'm letting him know, and that, that's not, I was more talking about, like, being critical of, of like, what the, what brand of PVC piping they're using, or something you like that. You didn't tighten that screw very well, mate. I didn't like that the plumber's work. van was white when it came up to the driveway. <laughs> it upset me. I thought their logo was boring, and I would expect more out of my plumber. You know what? If, if my plumber hasn't got a good logo, a memorable logo, I'm not having him. I'm not even answering Right? Him. Exactly. <laughs> um, you, you, you were talking uh, earlier, though, about how, like, you you were told that Warhammer's never been bigger. Yes. and And how there's lots of critics in the gaming industry. I think yeah. that, like, when it comes to Warhammer, there it, it's... One thing that is apparent is that the only people who make Warhammer games are passionate developers. The I only people... Like, with the exception of maybe some, like, mobile game stuff, there's not yeah. too many cash-grabby Warhammer entities yeah. that I know of. It's usually a small studio that is trying to make the best whatever in the license, and oftentimes it's hit or miss. Because the most passionate developers aren't necessarily the best or the most well-funded, but yeah. they've got the passion there. Fat Shark... I'm I'm always very interested in their projects because they have so much passion for the source material and what they're doing and they go out of their way to make every little detail such a big deal to them. And I I hope that moving forward, you know, one I hope that you are involved in more Warhammer titles because I think you've got a, a perfect voice for some of these roles. Uh, that's very common, um, man. Thank you. But like I I I really think that uh, Warhammer as a franchise suffers from not a lot of studios giving it a chance because the people that can make the big financial decisions aren't necessarily a fan themselves. No, I so agree. I, I just think it's so cool that we have games like Dark Tide coming out or, you know, I just, Warhammer Total War that are, are making really good examples for what yeah. Warhammer is supposed to be. And thank you for taking it seriously. You know, I mean, oh, like wow. you, you, you're someone who, and, and I really mean that. Like, as a fan, as someone who really loves Warhammer, it's like one of one of my my passions for collections and, and, and playing and all of that. Like, it's really nice to to have people in the industry taking it seriously that also care about the project and doing Absolutely. good work with it. So, I, it's it's funny you should say because I think what scares some, uh, I don't know if it's investors or developers are is the fact is that you can't just make a Warhammer game. You oh, gotta, yeah, no, you gotta you gotta get that you gotta, license. Yeah, you gotta get the license, but also you've gotta get the law. Like, you've got a lot of information to go through, baby. You've got a lot to go through. Because like, I've heard, like, it's down to, like, the color of a certain knee pad being in the right place. I've heard, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's so easy to scrutinize every detail. 
Now, I don't know the the deep details of the, the lore in terms of outfits and such, but from playing Darkseid, and this is very biased, and I totally understand that, but I feel like it massively captures, in my mind, how, you know, a Imperium Hive City would look. I mean, I did the, the throne side mission yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's, it's incredible. Like, it's just, you know, all the holy statues and... The Space Marine statues, it's just, it's just fantastic. Yes, I'm very biased, and I know that, but <laughs> it's, you know, seeing that, like, um, adapted on a, like, a triple, triple A, you know, basis with that money, it would be incredible. I mean, Fat Shark have done an amazing job with what they've, they've got, so if they had, like, a triple A money, I don't know what we'd be looking at, but it'd be insane. I don't think we could physically handle it. I, I mean, it's... Dark Tide already seems to be a game that pushes a lot of uh, gaming PCs to their limits. You know, I, I've got a very beefy PC, and and it's the visuals are they the, the trailer didn't do it justice. It, it really didn't. Like I, I went out of my way to try and avoid a lot of spoilers for the game, yeah. but but I was, you know, I, I feel that we get kind of spoiled nowadays. Like everything looks good enough in a lot of games that it's really hard to be impressed like it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. it's, it's kind of sad to say is that like we're kind of like uh bludgeoned into i don't know apathy towards beautiful visuals yeah. unless they're really yeah. stunning and i think that dark tides aesthetic really really captured the the grimmest darkest that they're that they're going for i have to agree with you completely i i, I also feel like um like you said in regards to the art style like because the graphics are you know uh, rapidly getting better and yeah. close to the realistic and i think some some people probably again a vocal minority they they expect it for every game so like they come to dark time like oh the graphics aren't very good are they but i feel like in a way one thing that's being more appreciated now is a specific art style like just to compare it quickly to um into the spider verse they went for the film sorry not the game um mm -hmm. no, they're, they're game for it <laughs> and uh it's it's obviously got this very unique frame rate it's got the you know the comic booky style which we've not really seen in a certain position and that was massively i mean it's a great film anyway but the the art style is very much what's spoken about and it's influenced other stuff whereas you play a game like uh, God of War Ragnarok it has a specific art style but it's a lot more subtle so you wouldn't mm. look at it and be like oh you know uh, oh I love the art style of it you just be like oh the graphics aren't as realistic as they could have been and the truth is most of the time you don't need it to be as realistic as you want it to be you know yeah and mo motion capture's taken steps forward in the way where you, you can get the little nuances and facial twitches through performance capture but it isn't always about them looking as real as long as the performance is kind of like uh hitting enough or gets the job done i don't think graphics are everything at the end of the day mm. yeah it's nice to get, you know the particles and the blood splatters better but i feel like um sometimes you just don't have the the physical uh what's the word supplies to get that across if that makes sense to you mm -hmm. absolutely so, yeah yeah, I completely uh, see what you mean. Yeah, I, we have, we have, I think we have been spoiled in a way, and I think we come to expect uh, a lot from. If you think about ten years ago, what games looked like, massively different. Sure. Ten years before that, it, obviously, it's get. I think the the jump is getting less and less noticeable because rather than being things we can see, it's more things behind the scenes. Yeah, it's like, like it's yeah. like frame rate improving like, like on this that, most yeah, recent console probably. generation. Like I. I I know a lot of people, you know, they, they play their PlayStation 5 in performance mode because they, wow, 60 frames per second is great. They, they, they realize yeah. what they've been missing out on and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed the, the 60 frames per second, but I've, I've you know, I've, I jump between. I, I see what I prefer, you know, like, because it's a shame you can't have both. You can't have the best of both worlds, I suppose, but um, I guess it, it varies on <laughs> sure. you know, what exactly... Uh, like appeals to you as a player really you know because we can't really see above 60 frames per second can we no i mean some people would, would argue that you can i yeah. i don't know <laughs> enough about it but 60 i know 60 and 30 look different <laughs> at least yeah I, I have seen the difference between them so i, I can confirm that <laughs> yeah so uh here's here's a, a fun question for you i don't know if you can answer this or not or if I it's intentional Right. So yeah, there's a right. couple of lines that that the judge says in the game that makes me as well as people in the <laughs> chat kind of go was 
Was that a heresy that we just heard? Is it by any chance? Scums for the golden throne! Wait, is is it, a, a, a certain a certain throne, yes, mentioned in skulls and and uh and and things like this. Was this an intentional intentional well, conversation point or conversations did take place about this because I was like, hold on a second, this does sound kind of heretical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um there an interesting discussion was held about becoming, I suppose, so radical with your own religion, which, you know, zealots very much are, is that you almost begin to lose the, you know, you blur the line between what you are, because we know the Imperium called, like, we technically see them as the good guys, but they are, they are, they are not. not and it's, and it's not the same not empire that the Emperor yeah, wanted. Yeah. Like, he, he wanted to do yeah. away with religion yeah. before. So it, it was, yeah, it's a whole... A whole different thing, and you, you could be argued that these lines are reflecting the fact that what the Empire has become isn't far off from what they're fighting in a way. And mm. the fact that the stuff they are preaching is essentially sounding a little bit similar <laughs> yeah. to, you know, blood for the blood god. Corn very, very, very similar to these things. There, yeah. there, There's one other line, too, which actually, like, hit me before the Golden Throne one as, okay. like... Okay. There's a line <laughs> where when you're facing your moment of death, you ask the Emperor if he has forsaken you. No comment. Oh, <laughs> man! <laughs> well, if I, if I was to give you my, um, my personal opinion on that, I feel like no matter how in the character, at least, however, how steadfast he is with his trust in the Emperor. Deep down, in most of these people, there is a bit of doubt. Mm -hmm. There is doubt there when they're at death's door and they talk, they talk, you know, the big talk about <laughs> being, you know, ready to die for the Emperor when that time comes. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of these Imperium folk, they, I think they believe that the Emperor truly protects them and will keep them alive no matter what. But so, so it goes to show that even even this most stalwart, yeah. zealous of individuals, even they are capable of having a crack in the armor. Exactly. Yeah, I think what's it may be uh, improved with more dialogue if it's put into the game is that there there is more to these characters. Like uh, with one thing I noticed with my character while recording is that you eventually kind of begin to hear a bit of um, a, a pity or. A bit of caringness from the judge to Ogrins. Mm. Like there is like a fondness. Like, yeah, like, like an almost like oh, they aren't as bad as I'm told they are. But I also must, you know, act like they are bad. So it's kind of like uh, good job, slab, but keep moving. You know, like he still calls him slab, which is yeah, a, you know, like a, a derogatory term for an Ogrin. But or, right, we're time, saying that you know. it'd be a shame if the emperor didn't give them souls for how loyal yeah, they are. I, th I think exactly. that was one of your lines too. Yeah, it was something like that, yeah, but, like, there's been other lines of recorded where it's kind of like... Because the, 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 the judge is basically an asshole to every single character in every single way. Apart from, you know, maybe other zealots every now and again. But at points, there's there's a bit of love for the Ogryn. I mean, I think it's not necessarily obvious, but if you listen at times... It, we didn't do it every time, obviously, because it'd be too obvious. But I think you will hear times where he's like, "Oh, he's actually kind of nice to the ogre in there." In, mm -hmm. He's in, in his own way, by the way, not like, oh, not like, "Oh, ogre, I'm so sorry that happened." You know, it's a bit more like uh, <laughs> it, it being nice in the only way the judge can be. <laughs> you know, so. And, and uh, there's also a, a bit of a joke I've been seeing in, in chat on occasion that uh, there is so much blood that the zealot spills that you you may as well be a corn champion. As, I as, mean, as well, because he doesn't care where it flows, just that just that it, it flows. Yeah, that's true. Again, blurring the lines between the uh, you know the enemy factions. I mean, like if I would not be surprised if at one point you heard. For the blood god. I mean, it, it it sounds it fits right in perfectly. I'm not I'm not saying because of how I'm saying it. Just like the character just sounds, you know, like it would. It would fit in perfectly. So, I mean, yep. how how great would it be to see, like, you know, story arcs opening up for these characters in Dark Tide? I mean, there's 21 of them, so the chances of that isn't very high. 
but I mean, I'd absolutely love for the judge to become this disgraced, you know, uh, you know, imperial zealot priest. I mean, they could then. do it with like a cosmetic or something like that too. Yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like, maybe just yeah. Oh. The, the voice lines get get a, yeah. a a filter over them that makes it a little bit more <laughs> yeah. uh, dark and warpy and. Kind of get yeah. like uh, the dark veins, maybe lancing on the temple oh, and all that. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna have to message the writers and be like, "Can we uh, get some uh, corn action with the?" <laughs> the well, they, they did a couple of other factions in Vermintide, so I, I think that Ooh, you know, yeah, corn yeah. corn would be a natural fit in a game like this. A lot of people are thinking uh, uh, Gene Stealer cults would be a. Oh. A yeah, good place. One of the few places where Gene Stealer cults would actually work out really, really well because you could actually have the elites be something, you know, like like uh, maybe, maybe not the elites. Are, are uh, the Plague Ogrins considered elites or are those a different classification? The mini bosses. Say, they were. Mm, the Plague Ogrins definitely are, aren't they? I'd class them as elite characters. If they've got a health bar, they're elite in my mind. Monst monstrosity yeah. chat is, yeah, yeah. is telling me yeah <laughs> but like maybe like for one of those things you know like like uh a demon prince or or you you know you want to see a bloodthirster at some point but it's also kind of like a, a little rough at times too because you're like oh man we we can't have them fight no bloodthirsters because they're prison convicts well like, yeah but it would be well it, it, it would be amazing to see so Mentioning Gene Stealers, my, my Twitch chat, the community themselves, they've said, how good would it be to have a level where it's like Alien, pitch black, and then you start seeing glowing eyes, and then oh, you, and you see that you're in a hive. Yeah, <laughs> like Gene Stealers. But also, again, another mission where you are caught in between a massive fight between the Nurgle heretics and a Gene Stealer court, and you've just got to fight your way through. That I mean, would be cool. Is, this is like big budget stuff, obviously, and also even bigger budget. Imagine. Atoma Prime or Tertium at least falling to more chaos. Chaos Undivided, I think, is the correct law term for it. So you've got all the chaos gods working some nasty magic about the place. Slanesh mm. Core, you know that that would be. I don't think it'd be physically possible to you know put it on <laughs> on a game, but it would be it'd be a spectacle for sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of other you know wave battle oriented enemies too. Like uh, orcs would be a great addition. You know, yes, of course, yeah, the orcs as well. They, they uh, there, there were there were some people saying like it would be cool if, if even if if you could be an orc, like uh, fighting other orcs someday. You don't <laughs> really know because like yeah. I, I know that Fat Shark says they don't want to do Space Marines and stuff like that in or Astartes in this game, but like yeah. if yeah. they do another game, it yeah, could be Dark, any of these things. Dark Tide Two, baby, get it in there. <laughs> Dark Tide Two, you hear that? We want it, I, Fat Shark. That, that, that's not a confirmation of it existing. Everyone, just want to put that out. <laughs> <laughs> but also, so, um, oh sorry, go ahead. Mate. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, like, there's a lot of uh, talk about people wanting a Chaos Space Marine as a as a boss, a lone mm -hmm. Chaos Space Marine, but like injured honest, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I don't think the rejects would survive it if the Space Marine was at full strength. So they'd be dead instantly. <laughs> so the 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 un I say this is unpopular because like it's, it's I I see people that push back against me in this, but like what one thing that I say is that it would be hard to put. Space Marines into this game as well because the level of veracity and violence that this these four models that we have are doing yeah exceed what Space Marines even kind of do at times in the books not always yeah but course. if you were to actually put a Space Marine the expectation would be that it would be so much higher and you the the judge is already cleaving like six torsos with a single <laughs> with no with no bionics or anything like you don't just bisect people in half like that let alone six well it's a good point you should say that because imagine like how sorry about that um so it'd be interesting because i i haven't played uh, dark Tide on the highest difficulty yet is it level 5 i've not done that yet mm -hmm. i imagine the only way to kind of adapt to you know being a space ring is to essentially have the game permanently at five. Yeah, this is like the easy way in. You create like a, a tall, uh, like essentially because ogrins are similar height to space marines, aren't they? Like roughly, I think. What was that? Uh, are space marines the same height as ogrins? Is that correct? 
Mm, close enough? You know, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the exact height of an ogren. I see. I play Adeptus Custodus. I know they're like nine oh. to to ten feet. Right. Okay. So maybe even taller than ogren. But or you, like, essentially, you could essentially get a character that is just that tall. Uh, up the armor and health. You know, give a wider spread for weaponry. Keep the game on uh, difficulty five. And it'd be close to like a space marine uh, simulator. Yeah. I mean, it mean, imagine you and your your lovely chat have seen Astartes on YouTube. Yes, yes, we are yeah. we are big fans. It's incredible, <laughs> and I still watch that season two trailer, even though it may never ever happen, and get hyped for it. Just seeing when that space marine punches that orc's face off, and you just hear that noise. It's just oh, yeah. it's incredible. But just seeing just seeing space marines in something that isn't a game. Or a board, essentially doing exactly what you'd see Space Marines doing. Like that, perfectly nails. Yes. The the professionalism, the veracity, and the sheer chaos. No pun intended. That um, Space Marines are capable of in a uh, you know in a combat situation, and it's you know, arguably a lot less blood. But getting a squad of Space Marines on Tertium, I feel like it would get a few of the missions done a lot easier. <laughs> right. A lot easier. And, and it's it's interesting too because obviously with with the the cast that we have in this game, you know, uh, for, for the longest time like I've heard that like the Warhammer community wanted like we want to play guardsmen. We want to play a, a shooting yeah. game with guardsmen. You know, like that kind of stuff and and to have the spotlight be away from space marines. But there's a lot of weapons that kind of get closed off when you think about it when 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 no, you, when you right. do that. So yeah. you see people are being like, oh, I really wish that the ogre had a heavy bolter. And it's like, that would be pretty cool. But <laughs> it would be cool. but someone would be probably be executed if they did that. But it is a video game. So like they yeah, could just like, do it, too. You could just do it, Fat Shark. Yeah, yeah, just guys, you know what? You've done well with the law. Now it's time to start breaking the rules. Get the heavy bolters. <laughs> I know. I know that we 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 were nitty gritty down to this elbow pad can't be off color. But yeah, we we we've got uh, a Hulk Buster armor for for this ogre now. <laughs> if the gameplay is good enough, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the gameplay is good enough. Just just no. Sorry, take about it. The gameplay is good enough. That's all that matters. Don't worry about the law. If the heavy bolter murders a room of people in like. <laughs> 1.5 seconds flat. It's it's I'm it's happy. only our our uh, vocal minority that actually cares about the lore, right? Yeah, That's yeah, it. I, I certainly hope so. I've also had somebody in my chat say, make a mission with a heavy bolter in placement and let the ogre pick it up. I mean, it does sound right, doesn't it? Yeah, it just, that, that, or, or there could be an engineer, or, or engineer class or something. Ooh, That'd be yeah. pretty cool. And speaking back to your point about you know an imperial guardsman game, like you can just play for. Uh, veterans on this. It's, it's close enough. Yep. Get Lazarus. There you go. Mm -hmm. Imperial games already made for you guys. It's right under your nose. Some of you just haven't realized it yet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so you you haven't done level five yet, but you are, are you an active player yourself? Yes. Uh, so I'll give you a quick run through of. Uh, so I've got a, a zealot preacher, level eighteen, because you know I. That's me. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, so got, I've also got a, a Psyker level four and an Ogryn level four. So they're not not amazing in terms of. I don't know what I'm capable of with a level 18 Zealot, but um, I'd like to level them up to be honest with you.